Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void! Today it's going to be a match between Sue and T.Y. from the Kind of a group stages, well, qualification stages. Because the group stages aired last weekend and the tournament wrapped up last weekend. Alright, so it's going to be Zen, the latter edition between these two players. Bottom left hand corner is the Red Terran player, it is T.Y. And in the top right-hand corner, the blue Zerg player, Sue. All right, good stuff here, man. What I like about the fact when I'm casting solo is I can go Sue, and it catches all of it. When I cast out with Laughing Games for the Africa TV Worlds, which are really fun, by the way, and one every two weeks. Like, you see the announcements. They come up on the channel every two weeks when I'm going to go live there, yeah? Anyway, the point is, we use Discord to chat with each other because he's in Canada and I'm in the United States. And when I go, Sue, it goes, Sue, and it cuts me off because it takes any long tone and is basically considered, and considers it bad, and removes it. Anyway, that is a, was that a 12 pool out of Sue? It was a very fast pool out of Sue, and he's expanding. So he's going to be aggressive, and now we know the rules, right? Say it with me, Terran has to SCV scout if they want to send the Reaper across the map. That's it, in a nutshell. You can send the Reaper across the map blindly. But if you do that and your opponent went pool first, you're going to get a delay and maybe even a cancel on your natural command center. It is the rule. It is the meta right now. So Reaper coming out, whose name is The Last Unicorn, a great book, a great movie, and a soon-to-die Terran unit. I've never actually seen The Last Unicorn, you guys. So TY is SCV scouting. Hooray! Hooray for him. He's going to come out. He's going to see. Maybe he won't see the lings. Maybe he will see. Oh, he's going to see the lings. He sees the lings, and then he sees the timing on the hatch and says, Hey, that's not a done hatch yet. Clearly, it was not first. Now, we keep the Reaper at home. Uh, T.Y.? T... T... T.Y.? I mean, okay, in fairness, some of these lings didn't move out. Oh, oh. So it keeps one of the lings alive because there's a queen. These two are still cruising in, though. What is he? He's got a marine. Is one marine enough? I mean, he did. Okay. Yeah, I guess so. One marine's enough to shove away two lings, not four. Okay. So the SCV basically was keeping tabs on these two lings and knew they hadn't moved out. So the Reaper came to kill them and recognized that two lings were not going to be enough to actually delay construction on its command center for any length of time. Yeah, the kiting here. Marine cost efficiency is through the roof, you guys. There's been analysis on this. And Marines, for how cheap they are and how much utility they add throughout the entire game, really, really cost efficient. Maybe the best units in the game. They're not unstoppable. There are things that can murder them. Banelings love to murder them, obviously. Storm, pretty good against them. Colossus. Like, I mean, there's answers here. But uh, just, you know, it's not necessarily OP, just the most cost efficient unit in the game. There has to be a most cost efficient unit. That's how this works. And that's the one. Third base on the way from Sue getting that speed. Putting the workers back on the gas. Oh, he pulled off for a second. And they didn't put him back on. What did he see? What made him change his mind about that? I don't think he has any additional information here. He hasn't scouted anything. He's... Mm, nah, he doesn't have overlord speed. Quick check. Okay, no upgrades. No overlord speed, which... Uh, you really should get overlord speed. Starting around now, so you can actually scout it and see what the Terran player is doing. If it's good enough for Serral, it's good enough for you, Zerg players. And good enough for you, Sue. So Reaper is still alive. I mean, he's got one kill, so he's not exactly, you know, on fire here. But he's not dead, which is a big deal for Reapers at the four-minute mark of any match against somebody as good as Sue. But it is going to be Cloak Banshee, which I strongly associate as being a special thing. Special loves going Cloak Banshee openings versus Zerg to the point that... If you're playing against special and you don't get spores, you're doing it wrong. I don't know that uh, TY has been someone to do that as much as Serral has, but that's fine. We'll see. We'll see how this works out here. But, uh, hmm. So third base in it. We're at four and a half minutes and there's spores coming up now. So perfect. He's got this figured out. It's more of a Protoss thing to get the safety spores at four minutes. But against Terran, you're going to want the safety spores too. Especially if you're entirely blind. As Sue is. She has no idea. No idea what's happening. So a bit of a small push here from some Marines and some Hellions. And it's just not really enough to cause problems here. There's three Queens. 
There's a bunch of lings out. They do have speed. If you want to engage onto the creep, we will happily kill you, says Sue. The Overlord. Oh, I thought maybe I saw an Overlord come in. No, because they don't have speed. Interesting. So Banshee getting some work done here at the Natural. Does get end up uh, four drone kills there. Coming into the main base. Going to take some queen hits real fast, though. Is it enough for... Ah, oh, missed on that one. Almost got another drone kill. Did get another drone kill. Ends up with six, which is a decent number. And does manage to escape into the dead airspace back here. Uh, so funny story. I'm not sure if you guys saw this, but there's the Team Liquid map contest, right? Which is how they decide what the new maps are for the new seasons of Ladder. What the heck are these S... What are they do... Are they trying to... What? Were they trying to mine through this to open up the door so it's easier to attack up this way? I have never seen that attempted. I mean, obviously it's not the first time, but boy. Anyway, Team Liquid Map Contest, they had the winners, and then they were like, oh, there we had some problems with the voting. We believe it to be invalid. We're going to vote again. And it was like, wait, what? I've never seen that before with the Team Liquid Map Contest. So uh, there were some complaints from Zerg players in the maps that were chosen for a lot of reasons, but... Uh, maybe they're doing it again, and I don't know if that's over by the time this posts, but maybe you can talk about it in the comments if they have the new map pool. And Anyway, one of the maps had an island base. An island base! When's the last time a ladder map had an island base? I want to say... Wings of Liberty? Was there a Heart of the Swarm map that had an island base? I can't think of one, to be honest with you. There was Scrap Station which was part of the beta for StarCraft 2 and as well, I believe it existed in Wings of Liberty. I remember playing games on that map and I never got the beta. Anyway, I'm sure somebody has a better memory than I do. We're talking about 10 years ago now, which seems insane to me that StarCraft 2 came out 10 years ago, but it did. Time marches on, friends. As it always does. Spire on the way from Sue. Okay. Oh, he might go for that Ling Bling Muta thing. Which we don't see a lot of players do, but Sue is one, Scarlet is one who will do it too. Uh, Serral's been known to go Mutalisks against Terran and just have the sickest Mutalisk control you ever will see in situations where I don't think they should get anything done. They get a ton of stuff done. So the Roaches are like, hey, we'll fight you, Hellions. We are so good against Hellions. If you want to stand and fight against us, we will absolutely tear you apart if that's what you want. Fourth base on the way from Sue. Spire is done. There it is. Spire's done, and absolutely no flying things. So, he might just be setting up for Broodlords here, as Infestation Pit is coming up. Banling Nest just now starting, which I think might be a problem for Sue. This is a pretty heavy marine tank setup with some Hellbat support, and Banlings would be worth their weight in gold. Every once in a while, every once in a while, this Borderlands skin really sticks out to me, especially on the Hellbats, and it just looks like Borderlands. I haven't even played a lot of Borderlands. I imagine people who are watching who have played a bunch of Borderlands are like, this is crazy. So the drones transfer into an uh, active war zone, which is a horrible decision. Uh, gonna try to hold this with like roaches and queens and some ravagers. Ling's flank attack and immediately get roasted to pieces. That's a canceled hatch. And TY is playing this exceptionally well because Sue skipped Banelings. Why would you skip Banelings, Sue? Why would you go roaches? Maybe he was expecting mech. This roach ravager queen thing really makes me feel like he was expecting mech. And I mean... In fairness, Drilling Claws are on the way, which is sort of a mech thing, and these Hellbats are sort of a mech thing, and these tanks are too, but it's like nine Marines at a time right now. I think TY recognized that Sue doesn't have Banelings, and that means Centrifugal Hooks is a long ways away, and that means Sue's in a lot of trouble. Again, I do not like how Roach Ravager trades against Bio. I don't. I never have. It is one of my least favorite things in all of StarCraft 2, is watching Roaches and Ravagers fight against Marines with Stim and Combat Shields. And Metavax, because it feels like the Roaches and Ravagers should win, but they just get wrecked. They get riggedy wrecked, son. Replacement fourth base trying to come up. TY trying to harass it. Look at this. Look at this right here. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Ravagers do so poorly against Marines with Combat Shield and Stim and Metavax support and 1-1. Call. All right, that night. I mean, I, I don't want to call the game early, but holy smokes. It is a three basing Terran versus a three basing Zerg at the 10 minute mark of the game. And uh, it, it's a lot of trouble. It's a lot of trouble right now for Sue. TY has been playing this perfectly. I don't know if Sue misread. <sighs> he does have centrifugal hooks now and a bunch of banelings. 
so I mean, you might be able to hold on at some level, but pick up, boost out. Corruptor's trying to chase. They have little boosters themselves because they're mech units, but uh, <laughs> it doesn't make him go any faster. It's purely cosmetic. So replacement fourth coming up again for Sue and taking a fifth up at super secret hidden base up in this area, which I feel like more proxies should happen at, but I've only ever seen it happen once in a cheese game from last week. Hey, if you don't watch the cheese compilations, the cheesy games that I post every month, you really should. I really just I don't feel like they get nearly the attention that they should get on the channel. I know it's not pro level play, and I know most of you are here 100% for the pro level play like this. But man, cheesy games from low level players are so fun. I mean, I always laugh my head off at at least a couple of the games every month. They're hilarious. Anyway, Bailing's doing some stuff. Uh, engaging off creep here, maybe not ideal. Corruptor's getting rid of the medevacs is a really nice thing. Crows about taking down a tank. And the Marines, as they do, stutter stepping their way to destroying Ravagers. But once Lings and Bane Lings show up, they gotta pull back. This is how this works. Lings and Banes are the answer, they always have been. I know Ravagers are good units, but man, stop making Roaches and Ravagers, please. Just go Bane Lings and Banes here. Maybe some Infestors would be nice. Some Vipers, sure. But the Ravagers and the Roaches are just not paying for themselves right now. Resources lost 8,000 to 5,000. Look at these Marines. They're like, we don't care. We don't care about your Ravagers and your Roaches at all. We will definitely target fire your Banelings and set our step away from those because they are scary. Oh, this Widow Mine. Oh, the Widow Mine's in the mix. The pressure is good. TY is just handling Sue right now in a way that I haven't seen Sue handled in a while. He did win that premier tournament last year. He's had a great calendar year. Spoiler alert, he did end up qualifying for the group stages of Katowice, so uh, this game doesn't matter in the long run for that sort of thing because both players made it in. Uh, man, Sue just has enough Banelings to barely stay alive here. Corrosabile, tank, go. Wham, 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 got it. Three Corrosabiles on a tank. That is the math you need to know. Yeah, so Sue's holding. Sue's holding here. It's 82 workers to TY's 80. TY has another base. I mean, he's expanding down this. It's just everywhere. TY is everywhere, and Sue has done nothing to push him off his front porch and threaten him at all. The creep spread is sort of anemic right now. I mean, again, he's really dealing with what is going on in his front doorstep. I totally understand that feeling. Bend there, friend. But again, coming in with a bunch of banelings is awesome, unless there are your widow mines, and then your banelings all die. This is awesome play from TY. Terran players everywhere should rejoice at this level of Terran to play. Sue, all right. Sue says, Widow Mines or no Widow Mines? Screw it. We're going. And high ground advantage, leaving the Marauders to absorb some of the Baneling hits and then pulling back to the safety of a planetary. So Sue has successfully evicted the Terran player from his front door. Sue's going for 3-3. Three, 3-3 three. Three, three also on the way from TY, so at least it will be even upgrades here for the Zerg player. He needs to do something else. He needs Ultras, or he needs Broodlords, or he needs Vipers, or he needs Infestors. I really don't think this Ling, Baneling, uh, Ravager style play is going to last for much longer in this game. We already saw how cost inefficient it has been with the 16,000 resources lost for Sue, 12,000 lost for TY. We got uh, some Caustic Spray coming on in on this planetary, but the 2-2 two -two Marines, like, they don't care that your uh, Corruptors have plus one armor natively. They will murder them anyway. Don't worry about it. Marines are the answer. Like I said, cost efficient. That Widow Mine drop? Yeah. Widow Mine dropped attempted over here. Number of lost drones is 11 in this game, which is kind of crazy for how aggressive TY's been here today and how defensive Zeus had to be. That he's only lost 11 drones is kind of a miracle. What am I? Doosh, good split on that. Great. I mean, that's a sick split from Sue. That is hard to pull off, everybody. I know it looked easy, but oof, I've never done it. Sue, trying to retake this base over this way. The tanks just... What? Okay. I don't... Mm. You do more t damage single target when you're not in siege mode. But it doesn't matter. The hatch is canceled anyway. TY is maxed out with three, three Marines. Okay, that is a bad scenario there. 
You don't want that to happen to you. Tanks are down. Big push coming up the left side, though. Which Sue does get advance warning of because of this creep. But I don't know if he can save it. That is a lot of damage being output into that hatchery right there. He's going to try to come up the ramp anyway and make something happen. Corruptor standing in, taking fire, getting rid of the medevacs as well as they can too. But the hatch goes down. Big time TY plays here today, ladies and gentlemen. He has killed two hatches and canceled at least three or four others, it feels like. These Marines are still alive, by the way. I don't know how, and now they're dead. But TY has been expanding like a crazy person. He hasn't lost. He hasn't come close to losing a base today at all. And anytime the Zerg player is on the back foot this much losing bases. Hey, look, Vipers. Sue figured out he needs something besides Roaches, Ravagers, Lings, and Banelings. Who knew? Okay, and Corruptors, I guess. Another hatch cancel. I'm telling you, I wish this interface kept track of cancels. You just want to uh, envision how the income is favoring the Terran player in the last 10 minutes. Yeah, this is what we're looking at here. That is insanity. Ling's trying to get something on a planetary. No, not without a Banelings. Top left for TY. Again, this is as much a start to finish shellacking of a Zerg player I've seen from a Terran in a very long time. We've seen Terran wins. We haven't seen this on the channel in some time. Not against somebody as good as Sue is. All right, and as I say that, Sue does end up getting his first base kill, which TY is happy to evacuate because he has several other bases that he can get the income from right now. Like, for example, this one that he's building. Another attack sprinting and stimming across the north uh, to murder a bunch of drones, kill this hatchery for the second time today, and Sue's just out of position for it. I mean, TY has been everywhere. Good Widow Mine hit. I mean, if we just keep track of how many drones and bases have died, it's just not even a fair comparison. He's going to get, he's dropping inside the main base with that small group. Again, this isn't going to win the game for him, but it is just death by a thousand cuts right now. This is exactly the plan for TY. It's been going perfectly for him. Another hatchery falls. This is crazy. Three hatcheries down. Again, so many canceled. Still making Ravagers. I don't understand it right now. I don't. Oh, that is your good game. TY wins it in 17 and a half minutes. Whoa, that end took me by surprise. But I guess, in fairness, it was 117 to 180 supply. Sue was just not allowed to get up a fourth base today. He wasn't. I mean, okay, this is a fourth, right? So, hmm, a fifth base, I suppose? Whatever. He wasn't allowed to have as many bases as TY was. TY was expanding all over the place. He lost one of his bases, but he was successfully denying bases from Sue so much. And so consistently, it just didn't matter. Again, look at this. Look at this graph. Starting at the four-minute mark, TY owned the economy virtually the entire rest of the game. Insanity. Wait, no. So the five minute ago mark. So starting five minutes ago from now. So 12 minute mark. TY owned the economy. Uh, 30,000 resources lost for the Zerg player. Sure, 24,000 lost for TY, but that is three hatcheries down. I want to say four canceled. Is that a fair assessment? 28 drones killed. Yes, eight SCVs died. Yes, one planetary died. Absolutely, that's what we're looking at. But it's just if you're doing the math and if you're adding and you're subtracting, which we should all be able to do, that was it. <laughs> just too many bases down for Sue. Not enough bases killed by Sue. And <laughs> why making it happen? I still think Sue refusing to build a bailing nest until later really cost him. And I just have to wonder if he thought this was a mech play. Did he think this was a mech play? If this was a mech play, sure, Roach Ravager early is going to make a ton of sense. But not even having a bailing nest when that attack showed up was insanity. And it just snowballed from there. StarCraft is a very snowbally game in that way. So, good job. I mean, great job by TY. I mean, Terran fans have got to be happy about this match. Just really no concerns about it whatsoever. I was shocked by how abruptly it ended, but I think Sue saw the writing on the wall. Saw he was only really mining off this base. It wasn't mining up here. His main was mined out. His natural was done. This base was basically mined out. Just nothing left. And TY is happily... Chomping away at several bases. 
with his 82 workers and his 98 army supply, and there was just no coming back. So Sue's smart. He recognizes things. And gets it. Beautiful. Uh, all right. Well, that's going to be it for me today. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. And you take care of yourself. Thank you.